Good morning. It is the morning of July 20th, and as promised, here is my video on the Cancer New Moon, which happens this morning at 11.32 a.m. So in this video, um, I it's not really going to be a video. It's more of kind of a podcast format, so if you want to you know, turn it on while you're cleaning the house or cooking or doing all manner of Cancerian things. Um, yeah, I invite you to just kind of sit back and listen. Um, this morning, we are invited into our second Cancer New Moon um, lunar month of the year. So we had one already just a month ago, um, the new moon that happened on the solstice, which was eclipsed, was a new moon at zero degrees of cancer. Um, and this one happens at 28 degrees of cancer. So we have a new moon at the very beginning of a sign, and then a month later, we have one at the end of the sign. So let's break that down a little bit. So we've got two very different new moons and we had a chunk of time in between them um, in which a lot of stuff happened and a lot of us felt stuck or mired in time. Um, as I worked with a lot of clients, uh, there was a lot of kind of confusion about where am I going, what do I do, and a lot of what I was helping people with was, okay, time is not moving the same way we've got we've got all of these eclipses we have all of these retrograde planets we don't know what we're doing with reopening the country with your life we can't see into the future and so what we got was this kind of bubble of time and it would be interesting if you want to share in the comments kind of what you did with that bubble of time because that bubble of time was contained by these two new moons. So we had this kind of eclipsed new moon and new moons are associated with beginnings, but we'll get into that a little bit more. And then we had this kind of weird eclipse portal, timelessness, stickiness, whatever, however it felt for you. And we, but something happened during that, some maturational process happened, even if it was just the sun maturing through the sign of cancer. And then we got to the end and now we have a new, new moon to kind of decide what to do. And when I was thinking about this, it's not just that we have two new moons in a sign because that's gonna happen about once a year um, in different signs. But what is really interesting is that we had one that was eclipsed, and then we have the second one, which is not. And I was thinking about the sisters of the Gemini twins. So in Greek mythology, we have the twins who represent the twins in the sign of Gemini were Castor and Pollux. And their sisters were Helen and Clytemnestra. Um, and so the myth is their mother was one of the consorts of Zeus, um, known in astrology as Jupiter by his Roman name. And she laid two golden eggs. And in each egg was a set of twins. And one of the eggs had immortal boy-girl twins, and one of the eggs had mortal boy-girl twins. And so the drama of the Gemini twins is that one of them was immortal and one of them was mortal, um, but they were so attached to each other that it was too devastating for one of them to die, which is why they got put up in the sky so that they could be together. But the story of the sisters is equally as interesting, right? So we have Helen, who is Helen of Troy, who is 
the face that launched a thousand ships. And then we have Clytemnestra, her sister, the mortal twin, who is famous in, <laughs> famous, <laughs> in mythology for marrying the king Agamemnon, um, and then later murdering him upon his return from the Trojan War. Um, so both really significant figures. So I was just meditating on this because we do kind of have this feeling with eclipsed new moons, we expect them to last longer and kind of their effects we see over a longer period of time, whereas there's something a little bit um, quieter and more earthly about new moons that are not eclipses. And we kind of expect them to be a little bit more short lasting. So we've got on the one hand, our eclipse on at zero degrees of Cancer at the beginning of the sign, zero degrees, very potent, um, with the rawest expression of Cancer. It's kind of Helen. And here's the eclipse that launched a thousand ships. And then we have at the end, at the very end of the sign, a much calmer Cancer energy as things kind of mellow out before they release into the next sign. And we have a new moon at 28 degrees of Cancer. And we have Clytemnestra, who, um, whose role in mythology in her story of Agamemnon and the Oresteia was really about balancing out justice. Agamemnon's death and then later um, her son murders her to avenge his father. Um, so what do we make of this? What do we do with this? Well, often new moons begin kind of thematic strains that will build and culminate at their full moon. So what that means is that a Cancer new moon will kind of build, begin a storyline and we may not be conscious of it because we're not necessarily conscious of what everything is going on um, during a new moon. But it will culminate at the Cancer full moon. And so what I kind of feel like is that we get a little bit of a not a reset button or a do-over, but we get to kind of revise the terms because we have been revised over the last month. Um, our, what we know about the world to be true has hopefully changed given the chaos going on around us with um, with the political unrest, with the pandemic, with the shifting narratives of who we can trust, um, has, you know, our, our world and our ability to feel safe in it, which is something that Cancer and Capricorn are both really concerned with, how safe we feel in our world, has shifted. Um, and so where we are today is, not where we were on June 20th. And so there's a way in which we can kind of be brought down to earth, to being grounded, um, and be much more wary of how we are looking at the future, what we are planning for, what is important um, to our to our lives, not the idea of our lives, but to, to our daily kind of gentle lives. I'm reminded of the phrase, how you spend your days is how you spend your life. And I feel like we're being reminded that our life is made up, yes, of these moments of achievement or these pivot moments where we change plans, but really of each day. Um, and so we're being invited to experience days in a different way. And so there's a way in which with this cancer, the second Cancer New Moon, we can kind of 
come into our softness a little bit more, realize the limits of our personal power, and come into some of the softer feminine strengths, which are nurturance, which are endurance, which are remaining in our hearts despite fear, which are the creation of belonging for ourselves and other people. And when we look at the chart for the Cancer New Moon, we'll kind of see how those are being spoken to. So, just taking a moment to kind of think about this new moon and what we want to say about new moons. So people can get kind of excited about new moons and they want to sit down and write out intentions and there's this kind of popular movement about ah oh, the new moons are the beginnings of things but if you think about the beginning of anything in your life you don't notice that it's begun until it's already begun right the kind of conception part right mothers don't usually know that they've conceived the moment that they've conceived any choice that you make to begin something in your life, the choice to begin is not actually the beginning, right? Somewhere before that, it was seeded in you and you didn't do that to yourself, right? There's a way in which there's an inception quality. We don't know how things begin in us and we don't notice the moment that they begin usually. And so where I think our kind of cultural practice around the new moon is a little bit off is in how much we force our conscious mind, our intentions, our ability to analyze, our desire to, um, to start new projects, all of this very cardinal, cerebral energy, and we force it into this energy of the new moon, which... The new moon is fertile and not conscious, um, right? As much as we want to believe, especially in our very Capricornian culture, that we are in control of everything and that if we just have enough self-discipline, if we just have enough digital, diligence and perseverance, <laughs> um, that we can master everything around us. Um, and that that is even desirable. Um, kind of destroy the potential of the new moon, which is to offer fertile ground and to allow things to be in relationship with us that we do not already understand. And what I mean by that is that if your life is a kind of a battle or a enforcement of your will upon the world, right? You're missing out on the world's um, creative desire to interact with you in new and innovative ways that you don't understand. Um, and there's a way in which there are invitations around you all of the time into a deeper reality, into a deeper relational experience with the world. And if we are caught up in our wills and our intentions the whole time, then we miss those invitations. And so the new moon is really a time to be open, even though we are deeply internal, um, and to kind of say yes to what might want to spring forth in your life that you don't even know about. And then it's after that, when we start re 
reaching these brighter moon phases, you know, the waxing crescent and, and the first quarter moon that we see what's breaking the surface. Okay, now these things have physical forms, but in the new moon, they're all dark. We don't know what it is. So it's really a time to soften our boundaries, you know, not necessarily relationally with each other, but internally to let things come in and don't pick them apart and analyze them right away. Um, and this is a double Virgo speaking to you. So I will analyze it at the very first moment, but not at the new moon. There's got to be some sacredness where you leave your <laughs> philosopher brain at the door and you enter the space of of harmony where your intuition and your body and your spirit soul don't worry about everything being perfectly articulated. So the Cancer New Moon is in kind of the juice of the mother-child dynamic of emotional intimacy of the spaces where we feel cared for or are very um, caring for others inside our tribe where we feel safe. So there can be some danger to that, right? Because that also means that there are people outside. And so I think we've seen with the South Node moving through cancer for the last year and a half, it's just, or the North Node, excuse me. Um, now it's in Gemini, but it just went into Gemini at the beginning of June or the beginning of May, depending on the nodes you use. Um, we've seen a lot of factions break out around where people feel safe, religiously, politically. Um, but we've also seen some, the rise of more Cancerian themes around kindness. Um, and around caring for each other. Um, so we're seeing this new beginning and we are understanding how to take care of each other and our loved ones in more basic ways that don't rely on the five-year plan or the five-month plan or believing that everything is steady. Cancer is also the sign of grief. And when I was in graduate school, the first paper that I wrote for graduate school was about um, the mother archetypes of grief across cultures. And so I looked at Rachel from the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's a passage that is repeated about her crying in the desert. Um, and she will not cease because her children will not cease suffering. We have La Llorona in Mexican and Central American folklore. The wailing woman who wanders the rivers looking for her children who she drowned. So she's crying forever. And we have Niobe from Greek mythology who boasted about the beauty and the strength of her children to the gods. And so she was punished by all of them being killed and she cried forever and turned herself into a stone that cries salt tears. And so we have repeated these women that cry forever. This way that a mother's grief over her children is unceasing. And I've seen in my life, a lot of women lose their children. I had a partner who died. My younger sister died. I've had aunts and uncles that passed away while my grandmothers were still alive. And so the mother grief, um, 
is something that I've experienced a, a lot of around me. And this kind of way in which we're all heartbroken upon entering the world or our hearts will be broken in the world by loss that we cannot fathom, that we cannot kind of draw a circle around, that we can't master with our minds. To be in the world is to offer your heart to be broken. And once it's broken, to do it again, right? To keep giving of ourselves and to keep having our hearts broken and to understand really what we can survive, right? Because when cancer stops crying, <laughs> when cancer, which is to say when cancer kind of shuts down the flow of the water, right? Cancer is a water sign, it's cardinal, it flows, it creates. If you don't want your heart broken and you shut down the water sign, then we end up with a little bit more of the stoicism of its opposite sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn has in some ways shut down its heart or shut down the more tender parts of itself. And I think there's a virtue in that because it has basically sacrificed the tender parts of itself in order to be strong, right? It is, it has become, um, it has become less tender so that it can be more rational in the way that it guides our safety. And not one is better than the other. They are two they're two sides of the same coin. They are the two parents, right? We need the boundary setting of Capricorn as much as we need the tender lovingness of Cancer. And they're not mutually exclusive. If you go deep enough in, Cap in Capricorn, you find Cancer. If, you know, Niobe turned to stone, right? Eventually, Cancer can withstand so much of its own pain that it matures into Capricorn. I guess I say mature, and that's kind of has an evaluation in it, but I don't mean it like that, right? There's just as much wisdom in the child as there is in the old person, but obviously time is different. Um, and so I guess by maturation, I mean moving through these cycles of time. So we went through this cancer season. We had a Capricorn full moon in the middle of it. We saw kind of the skeleton of the structures that underlie what is holding up our tender body. We were frustrated by our inability to move forward. We had mercury retrograde for a lot of cancer season in the sign of cancer. So Mercury going back to the past, going back to nostalgia, spending time in grief, spending time with our old pain, um, with what we have lost in the space of memory. And now Mercury is moving forward again and it will actually be cleared of the shadow of its retrograde on July 26th. So this is the final week where we're kind of wrapping that stuff up and looking out at the world as it stands now. Um, but we have been on a deep inner journey. And so, I would invite you to spend this new moon in reflection, thinking, thinking, by thinking I mean dancing or praying or meditating or however you kind of get in touch with the most tender parts of yourself, um, whether that is through your mind, through your practice through movement, through food, through relationship, um, 
all beautiful ways, however you can kind of crawl into your own heart and really spend some time with your tenderness. Um, the undertoes of life will move forward again. We're about to move from a water sign into a fire sign this week. Things will start moving again. But really spend some time with the themes of the past month and what they have brought you as gifts, as knowledge of your own tenderness, as all of the places that you are not beyond love. Let's take a look at the chart for the new moon for a minute. So here is our new moon chart. Uh, it is set for my local time and place. It, um, the new moon occurs at 11.32 a.m. here in Idaho. And it has 28 degrees of Virgo rising as its ascendant and the moon and the sun are at 28, opposing Saturn at 28. We also have a midheaven at 28, lots of 28s. Um, we've got the nodes just about at 28. It's, that is, that's our degree. So we've got the chart ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules Virgo, so Mercury is our, the, our chart ruler, and the 11th house, whole sign house, which it shares with the sun and the moon, opposing Saturn in the fifth house. So what do we have here? Well, we have the 11th house highlighted. The 11th house is the place of groups and of friends. Um, these are the people that we say we are a part of. Um, whether that is politically or, you know, these are, these are the groups that we identify with. And with cancer in the 11th, it's really important that we feel this sense of belonging. And so, right, this new moon is asking, how do I create belonging in my life? How do I experience belonging? How do I participate? In that, do I need more of that? Do I need, le do I need less of it? Am I too insulated in my own safety? Right, and we're being invited to think on that um, with Mercury there, but also to feel into that with the soft animal of our bodies, the moon, and our higher self, our authentic heart, the sun, and the sun and the moon being these mortal, changeable, glowing lights of our individuality are opposed by Saturn, the status quo in Capricorn, right? In the fifth house. And I love the irony of Virgo rising charts and Capricorn in the fifth because there's this kind of work is play feeling to having Capricorn in the fifth or plays work. Um, and so we've got this really kind of heavy, intense Saturn um, maintaining the status quo, maintaining the structures that be, and really making us feel potentially just crushed by the way that the world is. There is a heartbreak in having a new moon in Cancer, so soft, so tender, opposed by the what can be experienced as the indifference of Saturn and Capricorn. Now the opportunity here is that Saturn and Capricorn is not going to permit anything that won't last. So again, we've got this funny thing. We had this, our first Cancer New Moon, at zero degrees of cancer, formed a quincunx, so a kind of uncomfortable, itchy, tense angle with Saturn at zero degrees of Aquarius. And so there was just this tension and this frustration and this exhaustion of how do we, how do we make a new beginning in this new world? And then the second one also has Saturn so prominently featured, but 
is a little bit of a different question. It is, how do I care for myself? How do I maintain myself over the long haul in light of all the work that we have to do um, to shift the old world? And to not forget that we are mammals, we are animals, we need love, we need tenderness, we need a sense of belonging. We, a lot of what's going on in the political discourse and all the anger and the vitriol about masks on both sides, right? Is that really keeping us safe to be so shaming of each other, right? If we create newness from cancer, you can't shame it into changing itself. We can't shame ourselves into changing ourselves. We can't, right, you know, even if we're taking a hard Capricornian look at things, that may help us to get some perspective, but it's not actually going to encourage the soft parts of ourselves to grow into new structures. So, there's so much tension, it's really hard to be flexible. But we realize that they are on the same side. Saturn wants to make sure that we're safe and stable in the long run, that we're not dismantling things um, in ourselves too quickly. So it's really holding on to that. And so we've kind of got, we've got the light of the individual against kind of the stark reality of our lives in this way that they are always opposed. And that's part of the mythology of astrology is that Saturn opposes the moon from Capricorn to Cancer and the sun from Aquarius to Leo. So Saturn is the natural opposition to the sun and the moon. And we get a really clear view of that with this new moon. Like, who are you standing in the tides of time? Um, and how do you create sweetness and softness for yourself and others? Right? How do you use your energy wisely with what you create with Saturn in the fifth? Right? It's all real life. It's all real life from here on out. What this new moon does not have is a lot of playfulness. It's pretty serious. We're pretty serious here. And that will lighten a little bit. So we have shifts of everything into fire signs. Um, but this is a moment to go deep, tend your animal, tend your heart, honor your grief, honor your heartbreak. Conception comes out of heartbreak. New things come out of our love for the old, right? When we are in our space of grief and acknowledging what we lost. What we are acknowledging is the value of the world around us. Um, and I'll leave you with a little anecdote, one more image. And that is when my boyfriend died. He died all of a sudden, um, about seven years ago in an accident. And it was, was about almost exactly seven years ago, the middle of July of 2013. And for about two and a half weeks, I made sure I always had peaches and nectarines really close to me, like kind of carried them around like a child and a stuffed animal or something um, to smell them because the smell of a perfectly ripe nectarine or peach is so heavenly. And I used that scent to ground me and to kind of hold me on earth um, while my heart was breaking. 
in all my grief to remember that despite everything, that life was sweet. Things pass away, we lose things. We lose people and all love is precious, even if, you know, small and feels insignificant, right? Part of what is so scary about death is that something that was your whole life suddenly disappears from your life. Um, and right, it's only in, internally, it's so real for you and externally. The world moves on, everybody else is fine, and it lasts with you. In this way that Saturn and the march of time will move on no matter what happens to you, while the sun and the moon will hold your story and kind of be more in the space of, it did really matter what happened to you. So let's use the memories of cancer. Let's use that deep grief pull into our heart to build a tiny fire that becomes the warmth of Leo living from the authentic heart. So, and hold on to whatever makes you feel irrationally in love with the world. Be well. Um, I will have another video for the full moon, hopefully, um, depending on how the birth of my son goes this week. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get that out. And I will also have videos for um, the next week, the first quarter of the moon cycle. Um, you can also find my work on my website, starhearthastrology.com. And if you wouldn't mind liking this video, sharing it, um, if you like it, comment. Um, I love the feedback. So um, I wish you all a blessed second Cancer New Moon. <laughs>